Hello everyone and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover 2024. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, sitting alongside my co-host, co-analyst, co-founder of theCUBE, John Furrier. Dave Vellante is also here with us this week. It's a great coverage. This is a special segment. We're yeah. doing an analyst angle with Holger Mueller. He is the principal analyst, Constellation Research, and of course, an esteemed member of theCUBE Collective. Yes. Welcome back on the show. Thanks for having Holger. me. Yeah, welcome Good back. to you guys. That's a lot of calls, John. We got a lot call, of call, we, call. We got we got to get back to our debate. We talked about large language models. We're going to get back to mm -hmm. that. But yep. I want to get your thoughts because I know you had got, you got a good question with Antonio. Had come on here. You were just in the one on one. You saw the keynote. You've been analyzing HPE, Nvidia, now the largest, most valued company on the planet, right. public company. Again, taking the center stage, what's your analysis of the relationship with NVIDIA, the go-to-market they're doing together? What's your assessment, what's your analysis? Well, which conference does the Jensen Wang not show up, right? I mean, I mean, two weeks ago in Florida, right, the connection was breaking down because of Computex, right? <laughs> so there's no, con no convention where Jensen doesn't show up. And every time it's a special connection, every time Jensen says, go vendor, where he is right now, it's the same thing he did today, but Antonio said, go NVIDIA too. And I think the, the special thing that uh, Antonio is very, very motivated about, it's important to align sales forces. So both sales forces are compensated for that. So that will make it much potentially more likely. Also, HPE before the uh, network acquisition, which we can talk about too, um, did an inclination to NVIDIA by saying we're going to put InfiniBand into the appliance they're going to come up with. Yeah. And in the Q&A, it was very interesting to say, like, kind of like NVIDIA needs us. I was thinking for a moment, maybe NVIDIA is going to buy HPE. He says NVIDIA needs us for the supercomputer expertise, which with no doubt yeah. HPE has, and for understanding the enterprise and the need to simplify it, right? Somewhere on the show floor we see here, there's an AI demo which you can deploy in 24 seconds, right? Which is impressive, right? I mean, you mentioned the NVIDIA maybe buying HPE. Um, it's not, change, nothing's, nothing's, uh, nothing's out of the nope, possibilities. Nope, nope. It's interesting you mentioned the supercomputing, HP has Cray. Also, they've been in the server business. Yes. And so, Jensen was on stage. I clocked him at 25 minutes, which I think might be the longest of the keynotes right. where he does the appearance. I mean, yep. he's an arms dealer right now. I mean, he's he's basically... Uh, he is Switzerland. He's Switzerland, so okay. He banks with everybody, <laughs> and he gets their money, <laughs> and he, sells and arms he gives them the table. GPUs for it. He gives them <laughs> GPUs for it, right? So he's Switzerland, he's a Swiss bank and say, hey, can I get a private account with you, Jensen? And say, ah, I'm not yeah. sure if I have no GPUs for you. <laughs> that's, that's it, right? But he can really almost charge whatever he wants. That's the, that's the thing. Yes, but I think, think they're not doing this, right? And they're also doing smart stuff of not using stuff for themselves because NVIDIA has own in-house organic workloads with the Omniverse and so on. And they said, better I sell those chips, in this case, to Oracle and run it in Oracle than taking the chips away, being my internal own competition. <laughs> uh, they demonstrate some product that should be shipping in a few months, probably by the fall. Basically, racks for the data center. I mean, it's what it is, it's AI oh. systems. What's your analysis of the product? Because it basically it's like, this is now the NVIDIA accelerated computing paradigm with HP. Okay, now HP's got their own private AI cloud, right. separate animal, but like NVIDIA and this go to market together is unique, I haven't seen that before. So it's going to be interesting to, to see how NVIDIA taps HPE, I mean, if you're NVIDIA, you get a good deal out of this, you get enterprise sales and support with HP, right. and they know their hardware. Right, this is the deal they should have done five years ago. Remember five years ago, everybody was giving NVIDIA a hard time that no cloud vendor was using their GPUs, right? Everything was, NVIDIA was making money with mining, with gaming, with uh, professional services, they were talking about automotive, but no cloud provider would take their GPUs, right? <coughs> this is why I think, um, Jensen Wang needs to send a basket, food basket to Nadella for that purpose that they <laughs> establish them in the cloud, and everybody has them in the cloud. But this is the deal which makes sense <coughs> to bring NVIDIA on premises. Yeah, grab a drink, I don't want to yeah. cough. I want to bring up the, uh, you mentioned uh, Satya Nadella and Microsoft, obviously the deal with OpenAI <coughs> created, created the rising tide that is now the AI tsunami wave of growth. <coughs> if you look at NVIDIA, they had the DGX Cloud was the hot thing. Mm. Not much of that much anymore. It's pretty much folded into the AI factory messaging and Jensen's talking about this model stack. They're kind of trying to do a land grab here. And do you think he's doing a land grab? Because he's basically saying, this is our microservice, our NIMS. Uh, what's your assessment of the model stack and then NVIDIA's, are they depositioning DGX Cloud or are they just going to double down on AI factory? They, they need to do a land grab because they live on loan time because they know Intel is doing stuff. They know AMD is doing stuff. So they want to be everywhere they can in order to secure the future of NVIDIA. So yes, it's land grab. So it's pedal land to land. the metal while they're hot. <coughs> Put the move, deals move down. It. Move as fast as possible, yeah. Got it. 
Well, one of the things that I'm curious to hear both of your perspectives on is because we, we, the, the first ever keynote at the Sphere, huge wow factor. Uh, both but John and Dave said this is the best keynote experience they've ever had. But I'm, I'm curious to hear your perspectives on whether there is enough substance behind the message that is getting the customers excited and getting you as analysts excited saying, okay, this is, this is really different here. Well, as, as analysts we're jaded because we see Jensen everywhere, right? So, oh, another conference with NVIDIA, right? But we have to think a little bit like the HPE customer. The HPE customer is a often European traditional company who's using HPE since 30 plus years and it's a trusted technology provider and they don't trust the cloud for everything. So <coughs> for them it means a new lease on life for the on-premise pie. It means I can run AI locally with server and cloud, with data residency requirements, I can run it in my place and this means HPE is going to be a strategic partner for me for the next 10 years. Yeah. For HPE and shareholders it means HPE is going to be able to, on the shrinking pie, to keep the shrinkage of the on-premise compute pie yeah. for maybe five, 10 years and even longer. Yeah. So it's super strategic. I think, <laughs> right on that. I think, I think the, the point he's made, just made is huge because HP was on a declining market share when it comes to on-premise data center gear and that's what they sold, servers, storage yep. and whatnot. Now they still, they'll still need it but they're being used in the cloud and in the new AI configuration. I think this deal and their private AI cloud essentially gives HP now a new modern data center um, club in the bag to go to companies are saying, this is now your AI infrastructure. And they'll buy it because the privacy concerns that you pointed out on our opening segment was our concern. The data's intellectual property. They don't trust the cloud in some cases. I think the cloud's great for data processing, but AI is complex system, a different thing. If you're doing data processing, maybe you use the cloud and use AWS. But if you're going to run your system, you're going to stack these racks in there. They look beautiful and they got horsepower to run those workloads. So in this conservative uh, Uberance that's out there now, I think people are like, they want the, the AI, but they're, they're nervous they, about privacy and, sec and security breaches. So if you're a company, you got to go, okay, I'm just going to buy some racks and see how it goes. That's going to shoot a, a, a steroid into HP, and they're going to bulk up, I think, more revenue from this in the data center. Exactly, so the interesting thing, right, HP and Dell are fighting for the shrinking on-premise pie. And now this on-premise pie gets new life into it thanks to AI because also there's not enough GPUs in the cloud. And this <laughs> back to the interesting role yeah. that Jensen has, who's going to give what? Right, yeah. am I going to give a GPU to the cloud guys? I'm going to give a GPU to Antonio yeah. and then grow the on-premise pie, right? And balance my risk out where we go. Well, just yeah. to put in perspective, that quote shrinking pie yeah. is a big pie still. It's a so, big pie. And, but and cycle, refresh cycles are coming. So this is actually interesting timing because it's still a huge number. It's declining, yeah. but it's still massive mature sure install base market. I think this is going to change that. We'll see how it goes. I mean, Dave and you guys will do the analysis on the numbers, but I see this as a compelling offering for an enterprise wanting to do some AI work. Exactly, exactly. I want to unpack a little bit too one thing that Jensen said about, about how every single layer of the computing stack is being transformed right now, right. And, he, and he really, he really built it up. And, and he's not, he's not blowing smoke. Of course, we know that AI has the power to transform huge swaths of modern society from from so many different perspectives. Yeah, yeah. But I'm curious how, especially as you were talking about what the customer sentiment is here. You know, yeah. you know, they, they know they want to move fast, they know there's a need to innovate, but they are also risk averse. So how do you think he is speaking to the customer and talking about that? I, I think that's a great question. I see it more and I speak more, we speak in just Constellation generally more to the type A companies as our friends at Gartner say, the ones who aggressively use technology. Don't ask me about someone who's not a laughing follower. They have FOMO, they have fear of missing out, right? They don't understand fully what it is. They, they think they need to do something. They don't want to do the traditional, we do another chatbot thing and so on. And they don't know where to put the eggs in the basket, right? Are we going to move to one cloud and do everything with AWS, with Google, with Azure? Are we going to do everything on premises more? And then the problem that we have on premises, right, which plays for Antonio and HPE is, how do I size that? If you're a CIO, CTO, and says we're going to do some, some AI projects in 2025, how many servers do we need? How many of these NVIDIA by HPE appliances will I have to use, right? And then one interesting aspect which uh, HPE brings to the table is the understanding of the data behind it. Because, <coughs> excuse me, they acquired a company, MapR, some time ago, just yep. kind of like in the SAP Esmeralda <laughs> connection. They have the ability to catalog all the data which is in the cloud. So the nice thing for CIOs, get a little more, John, right? Don't worry about it. 
we'll get the data for you every other weekend when you rebuild your Salesforce-based chatbot model and the latest, greatest stuff because you have idling GPUs, we'll utilize them at the fullest. So I think it's a good enablement for customers being comfortable to have something on premise, with something which they know, in a combination which could take off very well. Talk about the, uh, <coughs> that's a great point by the way, I want to I circle back to that if you don't mind. The, the, if you look at the, the data stack and the model stack, Right now, we're seeing, we just came off a bunch of data shows, now we're here. It's clear that the or enterprises want Gen AI and, and the infrastructure is not really ready. Right. And that's what they're talking about today. Yep. So assume that that happens, gets better, faster, small, smarter, cheaper. But now the data layer comes in, you brought up data. Yep. We know that the data estates are highly fragmented in these enterprises. Right. They're, never gonna, they're gonna have SAP, they're gonna have Oracle, have all this stuff out there. But the, uh, when we talked earlier, Rebecca brought up privacy and security. Yep. That's kind of more, kind of halts all the innovation. How do you see the market and, and the research you're doing where the demand's being satisfied and still being managed around the risk management of the data privacy and security, and then is the data estate so screwed over where it needs a reset, or are there strategies to look at the data in a way that's different? What's your take on that? I know the last one we know is, a data is a huge problem, but we know that's being yeah. worked on, but yeah. talk about the demand, the risk management, and the data fragmentation problem. The fragmentation problem is real, and the other thing we've been talking about a long time is data gravity. Like you have some data there and it attracts more data because one plus one is five or whatever, the insight which you have. The famous diapers and beer moment from data mining of the 90s, there's a, a thousand combinations of that in the data, but you have to bring it together for that. It might remain fragmented because like we said, the transactional systems, you mentioned SAP, Salesforce, or somewhere else. The ability to have a data plane and then to move the data. Not just to know there's a catalog until I get my data out of that cloud, my GPU is idling and I don't know why I have it reserved for that, yeah. but to bring the data there in time for that specific retraining job. That's going to be very, very interesting to utilize GPUs because right now, everybody's trying to optimize the utilization of GPUs, which has redefined every player yeah. of the stack, as you said before, Rebecca, yeah. that networking is so crucial, right? So I think it's a key moment, absolutely, where the network is coming back, and where back to HPE, the, yeah. the acquisition of Juniper is a smart move, most likely. Uh, Rebecca, we had <coughs> Howie Shu on, who's another CUBE Collective member. He's not an analyst, but he's a subject matter expert. He's a, he was a nerd. He coded the first line of code for VMware networking. So he yep. was during, he worked for VMware when the hypervisor was coming out. And at that time, we, thought, we talked about server utilization was a problem, and then the hypervisor came out, right. the rest is history. Cloud was born, yep. maximizing all that utilization. Are you seeing something similar? Because we were riffing on this, I want to get your yep. thoughts on this. Is there a market out there, Louis, you can say, hey, we might have a lot of capacity here with GPUs. Yep. Is there a server utilization equivalent with the hypervisor that we're seeing with the, all these NVIDIA, HPE big systems where you can actually get in there with software, and is that what CUDA does? So what's your take of this? How do you manage the utilization is there a hypervisor in our future for data? Data will be a big problem. How do we manage that data? Well, it's not a hypervisor. It happens in the containers already, right? So Kubernetes has one for that. The problem is the container doesn't move usually the data with it, right? So you have the data plane which gets me the data for the AI job that I have. Might it be training? Might it be execution? That does not exist, and that's an open race between the data breaks, the snowflakes, and the rest of the world. It's going to be very interesting how that's going to pan out. But the ability, which I think is great on the HPE side, to know what is there, and then build the transfer capability which MapR originally had, which was a yeah. great differentiator. To revive that will make the HP offering much, much more interesting going so forward. So you, you brought up MapR, so if people don't know MapR, that was part yeah. of the Hadoop world, and at that time you had Cloudera, Spark came out of Hadoop, and that made Databricks a company. MapR quietly sitting at HP. Yeah. Interesting it's, little tidbit there. Yeah. Now, that, they seem to be in a perfect position because we saw Databricks, they're still doing Spark, but the most part is yeah. Lakehouse. Right. But so is MapR doing stuff like Lakehouse work within HP? What do you know about MapR, what can could, you share? It could create the Lakehouse capability for HP, both on premises or in the cloud. So the problem is only that HP has this rocky history of software, right? We were all excited two years ago or three years ago when Esmero was coming out, HP is about software again, finally, and then kind of like petered out, right? But the assets for that are still there, and now it really comes back to them to realize in the combination with the AI opportunity, if that's going to be something they're going to invest in. So we're, we're talking a lot about, about training and tuning AI models, but, but one of the things that Antonio Neri was talking about on the main stage is actually 
tuning and training the, the humans. And, and he, he had a moment where he said, when you work with HPE, you're working with AI experts. And this, yeah. he was talking about upskilling his sales force. But I'm curious to hear both of your perspectives on, on what, what message is he trying to say there as, as a differentiator? Well, I'll start first. I used to work at Hewlett Packard for nine years, so I know, that, I know the HP dog whistle when I hear it. He's basically saying to his staff and employees, we are going to be trained. He basically stood on stage and- So and it's a moment to his I, workforce. I, 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 well, combination of both. They're doing a big deal with NVIDIA, which means they got to bring the NVIDIA DNA, which is very technical, into mm -hmm. HP, which has been a great sales and service organization. He's basically saying, and they do have technical people, but I'm not saying they don't have the chops, but they're not making GPUs and, and their stock price isn't $3 trillion, yeah. so valuation. So, but the point is that he's saying, we are going to go to market with NVIDIA and we will be lockstep with them. Our people will be trained, they'll be advising, and our GSIs are going to be peaked. That was, to me, was more of a burning the boats moment, he's saying, we're all in on this, and that's what he's doing. Yeah. I think it's, one of is all being all in, no <coughs> question about it, but if you think about NVIDIA, they don't have enterprise expertise. This is all happening recently, right? And all the interest that are coming is from the cloud hyperscaler side, which don't give them the enterprise expertise either. So who is a good partner for Jensen, who has long-term enterprise history, has an installed base, yeah. understands, like Antonio in the Q&A was saying, we've been doing AI for a long time yeah. on the Cray supercomputer side, who knows how to build complex systems, because really the feed behind NVIDIA is building super complex, I forget the numbers, right? The SKUs yeah. in these systems, right? Yeah, yeah. And then the interesting thing on that perspective is also how Jensen Wang is putting the whole industry on a new tact, yeah. on a new rhythm, by saying we're going to have a new supercomputer every year, which is unheard of, right? It means double as fast as Apple can turn on iPhones, which takes <laughs> two years, right? So I, I, I don't know if that's going to be well, but he's forcing the whole industry, Intel, AMD, anybody around that in the once a year locks, but I'm not sure if there's enough capacity and skills across the industry to go from two to one year with a double the speed. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's a great deal, uh, and I love your point there, Holger, because you're right, it's a good fit for each other. Yep. NVIDIA wins huge. HP's customer base has been that legacy. They've been traditional enterprises. This is essentially a shot in the arm for their entire, their install base customer and net new customers. NVIDIA brings them the, the, the sex appeal of GPUs, but also they're both hardware companies. You know, even though Jensen, engineering even though engineering companies, engineering companies, they're engineering companies, <laughs> and they know hardware and they know software, right. and that, I think that's just a good match, and I think it's going to be a win. HP needs a, a, a shot of adrenaline, uh, and this is going to give it to them. And Nvidia needs the enterprise because HP's got Salesforce yep. and enterprise go-to-market shops. We got channels, right. GSIs, and direct selling, and I think that's what Nintendo is saying. We're going to make this work. They have to. He burned the boats, and again, this is why I was thinking for a moment the Q and A when Antonio was talking about Nvidia. This might be an acquisition target. So you might have heard it here first on theCUBE, and then don't we'll, start any rumors here, but no rumors, no, no analysts, rumors starting here that no. HP's going to be bought by NVIDIA. Exactly. But we <laughs> will not, we never will say, not that. say that we rumor. Never that'll say that. that'll no. never happen. No. <laughs> no way. They'll never get, NVIDIA will never buy HPE. But there's a lot of synergies, right? <laughs> <laughs> I never said that. Yeah. It's not a rumor. No, no but we it's a good start I, I, mean, I, I would look at that combination saying those yeah. are two companies where NVIDIA would get instant enterprise chops. Exactly. Enterprise exactly. AI is now prime time, exactly. market cap continues. And NVIDIA takes out one of the key competitors, which is supercomputers. But right? NVIDIA cannot buy the cloud guys. There's no way to that, yeah. right? So it would be stupid for them anyway, because again, Switzerland, I want to sell to every cloud guy, right? So I don't want to buy a cloud guy. Super computing is their crown jewel I now. I love yeah. this. And they I got a map bar. The craze bag, the craze bag, I couldn't believe last year, I could touch a cray for the first time in my cray. life. I mean, I was thinking like, I might go to the UK, to the cray labs to see a cray, like 20, 35 <laughs> years ago. They're in the museum. They're, just here. they're yeah. in the computer museum. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see like the Mountain wiring, view. did you see the wiring on this thing, that they had to hire small technicians to do the wiring inside of these things? Unbelievable yeah. stuff, yeah. unbelievable this, stuff. We are going viral with this. So th Holger, thank you both. Thank you <laughs> so much you. for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm Rebecca Knight for John Furrier. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE's live coverage of HPE Discover. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in tech enterprise news and analysis.